For those of you who have been waiting for a VCR repair video, you're in luck because I have one today. It's a sharp multi-system VCR that won't load the tape. This is going to be a mechanical problem and uh, we're going to take a look at this one and uh, see if we can get it going. And this is quite an unusual machine because there's not that many of them on this side of the pond. This is a sharp super multi multi-system VCR. It's a six head unit. CCAM, MEC Campal and NTSC. It's a model VC90 ET and the complaint on it is it doesn't accept a tape. Yes, it's kicking the tape out as soon as it goes in. The mode switch itself is more than likely dirty. Let's just see what happens when it, when it goes in here. Not even completing the loading cycle. Tape's not dropping. First thing I'm going to, do, going to do on this is I'm going to clean the mode switch, which in this unit is right here underneath this mechanism here. So there is the mode switch right there. So I have to take out this assembly to get at it. Um, that is going to get cleaned first because that is more than likely the reason that this thing is not loading properly. Mode switch. Note the home position. The arrow. That's where you want to get it back to when you once you put it back together. Now the easiest way to get this thing apart, because there are clips underneath here, I don't want to break, so the easiest way to take this out is to remove the mode switch. And it's actually easier just to remove the two solder points on the motor. Note that there are resistors on the board here so we want to be careful not to damage this painted area of the board because these damage quite easy so that's why I'm not going to remove the mode switch by unsoldering it I'm going to undo the motor and then lift the whole circuit board off with the mode switch attached to it
Now I can open the switch by just pressing the little tabs in here. Let's get some deoxit in here and clean this. We'll do the same for the switch itself. Put some deoxid on the contacts here. Put another couple of shots on the switch and then I'm going to put the switch back together and spin it a bit. And then we'll put this back in the unit and see whether the unit works. And I'm betting that if I do nothing other than this, that this unit is probably going to work. Good enough. you guys are wondering why I didn't spray this thing first it's because the valve on this deoxid stuff tends to leak and it, it pick up it collects some of the deoxid uh, around the top here as it leaks once in a while so I soaked that up first and used that to clean don't want to waste that stuff because it's like gold okay, to reinstall just make sure that the switch the arrows are lining up that way when I drop the switch over it'll the the uh, key here will will key in with the the cam gear we'll just drop this unit in this is actually a very easy unit to clean the mode switch on because it just drops back in place just like that three screws go into it and then put the belt back on for the loading mechanism and uh, plug the, the power uh, connectors back onto it and then we'll see whether this thing's going to load. Moment of truth. Power on. Oh, might help if I put the belt on there. Notice I have not changed the belts because I don't have the belts for it. Shall we plug a monitor into it and see if it works? Okay, video three. Press play. 
and it's playing. Got sound. Gotta shut that off before I uh, get in trouble for that. One thing I've noticed is that the display is out. The vacuum fluorescent display is out. I'll have to uh, talk to the guy that owns this and see whether that's important because uh, he's likely not using the tuner on this and likely not using the uh, timer on this anyway. I think this machine he's probably using just because it's a uh, multi-system so that he can play tapes that were uh, recorded in Europe. But the unit is, is working. And all that was wrong with it was the mode switch was dirty, which is a pretty common uh, fault on these sharp machines. So I'm going to close this video now for this and I'll talk to the fellow that owns it and if he wants to proceed with the digital display, the vacuum fluorescent display fault, then there will be another video to cover that. Check all the other modes here. Reverse search is working. Forward search is working. And freeze frame is working. Press stop. This unit keeps the tape loaded uh, until you change modes. I think it unloads when you go to fast forward. So we'll go to fast forward. There's fast forward, stop, and it should load again. These machines loaded all, they stayed loaded unless you went into fast forward or rewind. If I go to rewind, it'll unload, go into full rewind, stop, it'll load the tape again. And if I press eject, it's now going to eject the tape. So I just need to clean this machine and uh, it's ready to go as far as the VCR portion goes on it. As I said, I, I may be doing another video on this. It depends on whether the guy that owns it wants to spend more money on it. We're at one price point now to fix this. But if he really wants that display fixed, then we're going to have to spend more time on it. And we'll get into another price point. So I'll have to have that conversation with him. And uh, whether there's another video made or not will depend on whether he wants to go down that road and fix the display. Again, if he's just using this as a playback machine and doesn't need to, uh, or even recording from a line input and doesn't need to have the actual timer working, then there's no point in going down that road and finding where the problem is. Could be a capacitor in the power supply, but it also could be something in the display itself that's causing it. The unit is playing the tapes properly now in stereo, hi-fi, everything's working. So as far as the physical machine is concerned, the mechanical part is fixed. I love sharp titanium coated drum. Whoop the freaking do. What good is that? What's it gonna do? The drum is not what wears out on VCRs, it's the heads that are on the drum. And they're not made out of titanium. So coating the head drum in titanium it uh, didn't really do much as far as improving the life of it. It just made it look cool. So we'll clean the head drum. A little bit of a little bit of dirt on there, not much. And we'll clean the audio control head and full erase head. And that will end this video for now. They use a Q-tip to clean the lower portion of the drum and keep the uh, keep the head away from it while I'm doing it. Move the head out of the way while I'm cleaning out the uh, groove. Just we don't want to touch the the head chips with a Q-tip.
One last test. Feed it the good old color bar playback tape. And there it is. Looking good. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one real soon. Bye for now.